Good morning everyone, Trackman44 here. Hey, today's going to just be a quick and simple little uh, little box. It's actually called a return air plenum box, but it's going to be a, a box that a buddy of mine needed me to help him make for a furnace he's changing out for another friend of his. So uh, I'm just going to show you my variation or, or a different way to, to make a, a, a plenum box. I haven't really decided exactly how I'm going to do it. I'll do it on the fly. Probably going to be a three-piece box. Uh, you can make them a five-piece. You can make them, you know, three-piece. There's numerous ways that they can be made. Uh, and ain't none of them wrong, necessarily. Uh, just some are better than others. And personally, mine ain't neither better nor worse. You know, it's just the variation. So I, I'll show you a sketch here and let you know what we're going to do. Now, the way I typically build my boxes is with a reinforced uh, reinforced 90 degree bend inside here that's got an additional reinforcement uh, uh, in addition to that. So looking at this box, it's, it's going to be 21 and a half finished by 19 and three quarter. So to compensate for how much I want to fold in and fold over, I figure the height plus two inches because it's an inch and a half in and a half inch bend down. So 21 and a half plus two plus 19 and three quarter plus 20 and a half, 21 and a half plus two equals 65 and three quarter inches total length for that wrapper. We will end up with a U-shaped wrapper with a hole in each end or side. So then we take the 19 and 3 quarter dimension and because there's going to be a Pittsburgh on this and on this, we'll have a quarter inch bend on the 19 and 3 quarters on both sides and the bottom. So 19 and 3 quarter plus 1 quarter plus 1 quarter, okay, gives us 20 and 1 quarter uh, cut size and then the height is going to be 21 and a half plus the quarter inch that goes in the Pittsburgh and the, and the two inch to go in, which is go in for the reinforcement. So that adds up to 23 and a quarter, a half. So our cut size is going to be 20 and one quarter by 23 and a half for the two ends or the sides that plug into the horseshoe shaped uh, wrapper. So that's what we're going to do now is lay this out right here, run it through the lock farming machine, get that prepared, make the two plugs, put that in and uh, assemble that. And the furnace will set directly on top of it furnace has provisions for the filter in the bottom of the furnace the return air comes right down and slides right up against this and we have to dovetail the uh, fittings on the job site in order to, uh, to, to connect up securely and tightly. So what we'll do we'll start off with the, the two inch measurement here then we're going to add the height of it so that's going to be 21 and a half so that's two plus 21 and a half if you use a scratch all you get a nice crisp sharp line so here's 21 and a half height then we have 19 and a three quarter in width 19 and 3 quarter in width. So off of that measurement, we lay out 19 and 3 quarter. Then we pick up another 21 and a half off of that 19 and 3 quarter. Then we add two more inches for the reinforcement at the top. And if you like, you can double check your layout, verifying that your length actually is what you figured. I figured uh, 65 and 3 quarter. So if we take a look here, then we come up one inch off, so I've got to figure out what I added wrong. I more than likely added wrong there, because I'll double check this. I've got two inches here, 21 and a half, 19 and three quarters should be next. 19 and three quarter, 21 and a half, and two. So yes, apparently I added incorrectly whenever I did my math over there. No matter, because this works out perfectly. That's why you want to double check. If we would have went ahead and, and laid that out and folded that, I'd have a two inch error. I hate to admit it, but doggone it, I made a mistake. No matter, it's only a mistake if it cannot be fixed. So we're going to lay out a second one, simply because you can't always trust your T-square to be perfect. We have to lay out a second series across here. So let's go with two, 21 and a half, 19 and three quarter, another 21 and a half, and another two inches. Instead of using a T-square, use a nice straight edge like this circumference rule. Mostly minimizes the uh, chance of making a mistake or a crooked uh, layout with the possibly a bent T-square or one that you can't totally trust as being uh, perfect. I've got one that's really, really good, but uh, it's not always the best. It, it wants to flex a little bit. This circumference rule does not flex. It's a steel 48 inch circumference rule made specifically for layout like this right here. That should be the cut size for the, uh, for the big, the one piece, three sided heel wrapper. Now I opted for 24 inch material because the uh, the box is going to be 22 inches finish in uh, in width, and so we have to allow one inch for a Pittsburgh on each side. So 22 plus an inch plus an inch equals 24. No lengthwise cutting. All I have to do is uh, or widthwise cutting. All I have to do is cut at the length and uh, mark for my Pittsburghs. Give the appropriate notches, and we'll be good to go. 
It's always a little awkward working around a camera. Now what we'll do is right here where this uh, 90 degree reinforcement is going to fold over, we're going to have a, uh, an additional reinforcement by folding that over to about a 45 and then a 90. And then the other side pieces are going to be nailed into the side of this lock farmer joint here, this Pittsburgh lock. And so what I think I'm going to do now is cut off of this mark in and notch another inch and a uh, an inch and a half, which is the depth of the ta of the uh, reinforcement that's going to come in from the side. I'm going to go ahead and notch that out. I should have done that beforehand so that there's no interference when the plugs get inserted in the wrapper. This is the Pittsburgh Lock Farmer machine. It's a Lock Farmer brand that manufactures a Pittsburgh lock. Sometimes in a shop that's as crowded as mine, you uh, have to get a little creative with the longer pieces. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cross break the two sides and not the bottom uh, of the horseshoe or the three piece wrapper. Uh, simply because if we cross break them after we run them through the uh, lock farmer machine, it'll smash the, the Pittsburgh locks down and you, you have to fight it in order to get the quarter inch 90s into those. Just one more step that you got to, it's aggravating. So I just go ahead and cross break them first, then run them through the lock farmer. Sometimes in a shop as crowded as mine, you have to get a little creative with these longer ones to uh, dodge all the parts and pieces. On a larger piece like this is where that four foot table behind the brake uh, comes into play simply because right now I'm going to really have to fight it in order to uh, work with this just like I had trouble with the cross brakes. I've got to go about the business of folding this uh, safety hedge, this uh, 90 here, the reinforcement, then also the two other components over there. You can see now what I've got in mind as far as reinforcing is concerned. I got this nice ledge with that reinforcement bend down and the same thing over here. Doesn't look like much now because it is 26 gauge and it's a little loose. But by the time we put the ends in it and uh, tie those in, it's going to be just nice and rigid. Support that furnace just perfectly. Uh, heck, the one that's in there that we're removing right now is 28 gauge. And it's been in there for 25 years. So this should do just fine. Now for the size, we want two 20 and a quarter by 23 and a half. We get one left out of this sheet right here. So if I just come in uh, 20 and one quarter inches, get our second mark, 20 and a quarter inches by 23 and a half. That's going to give me my cut size, and so what I'm going to do is use the two factory uh, edges, and we'll lay this out right here, and we just go ahead and not have to measure that second one, providing everything squares up. It's all tolerable. It looks like it's going to work just fine. It's advisable to, to wear gloves and stuff. I've just never grown accustomed to them. Really cold weather, I'll wear gloves a little bit, but for the most part, your hands get a little tougher, you get a few calluses on them. And after you handle this stuff for a while, you just kind of know how and where to grip it. Uh, now, I've had some good lacerations, don't, don't get me wrong. But for the most part, I don't wear gloves. Now, these guys here just have one quarter inch all the way around three sides of it. Then we have a half and a one, one and a half. So we have two inches up at the top. So that's when you don't have to measure anything. You get out your handy dandy homemade uh, stainless steel scribe that you have notched at... Uh, you know, quarter, half, three eighths, three quarter, and one inch. No measuring again. Now we're measuring one and a half inches off of that half inch, which is going to be two inches in from the edge. 
So there's our two inch mark from the edge or inch and a half from the half inch drive. We'll do that on the half inch mark end on both of them. Come in two. Now we want to try to notch this a little better in order to miss those flanges that are on the three cornered piece that we already made. So if those come in an inch and a half, I should be able to come right here, one and a half inches off of that quarter inch mark. If I remove that material, it should allow those inch and a half flanges to fold right in place here. Inch and a half off of the quarter inch mark. It's not that critical. You can trim it as you assemble it, but it's easier to make it as close as possible to minimize all the aggravation once something is being assembled. There you go, we're ready to fold it. I'm gonna go ahead and cross break those, fold them, and then we're gonna go ahead and see if we can assemble them. Now this is the box and pan break. You don't really need the box and pan for this function, but uh, simply because it's so convenient here, I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. We've got our quarter inch bins. What we're going to do is we're going to take this out and uh, you'll see how this uh, comes into play. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. Now we won't be smashing the edge of that whenever we fold these guys here. We come into our half inch. This could be 90 degrees, it could be 30 degrees, it could be 85 degrees, you know. It could be 60 degrees. Just anything to give an additional stiffener. This one here though has to be 90 degrees because this is the part that the furnace is going to set on. As it's assemb being assembled, you'll be able to see that a little bit better. Just pull that right up. Now we do the same thing with the other one. When you use scribe mark, you can bend metal much more accurate. When you're using a one of those big felt tip pins. You might have 3 16ths of an inch on every cut that you can vary. So your degree of accuracy definitely goes downhill with those large felt tip markers. Now you can use a, a fine tip and get by. And I, I actually use a fine tip in some cases because it's easier on my eyes. I can see it better. But for the most part, I still like a scribe. This is the real difficult part right here. Shouldn't say real difficult, but it's a pain in the butt. So you temporarily knock that down, and if you're lucky enough to have an electric hammer, it gives a pretty nice finish to it. That electric hammer sure saves your wrists. So we're going to do the same thing on this other side. Height-wise, everything is fairly tolerable. It's all adjustable. By the time we put an uh, inch and a half armor flex tape on the top of that, everything's going to be just fine. I tell you, thing is a very good practice. You can take a uh, tri-square and just lay out some uh, scrap 90s out of your uh, uh, scrap pile that you just uh, just created whenever you made your plenum, and you're going to go ahead and notch these guys all around. And we're going to fold these into 90s and then give that a little reinforcing edge. I'm going to show you how to even more. Uh, uh, securely stabilize the corners of a plenum box. So if you hang on a second, I'm going to trim these out and uh, we'll run in and fold them real quick and I'll show you. So here we have the uh, four little angles laid out, folded. You can see two of them are installed in this corner and in that corner. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these right up inside here. Pull everything down nice and square and put a screw in from the outside and have everything nice and secure. It's not going to wobble and it's going to have a lot more strength to support that furnace. And it doesn't take anything but scrap and about 10 extra minutes to do. There's the finished product. You can see it's nice and sturdy. It's not going to rack. It's not going to move with the weight of the furnace. It's held nice and securely. We'll take Armaflex tape and we'll put a, a seal of Armaflex tape around that. Uh, set the furnace on top. It should be just uh, fine and dandy. So here we are, another quick and simple little uh, project out of the way. Uh, well, i got to make a plenum now for this furnace. Uh, and it's just a two-way transition. Uh, and it's only 10 or 12 inches tall, so it ain't no big deal. But at any rate, I checked the dimensions with the, the, the ruler. It's supposed to be 22 inch by, by 19 and 3 quarter by 21 and a half. And it's within a sixteenth of an inch all dimension. And it looks a little wobbly, but by the time you get the weight of the furnace on, I'm setting on my workbench here too, by the time you get the weight of the furnace on, get 85, 100 pounds on, it's going to squat down, it's going to set and do a good job. Like I said, this is just one variation of many, many, many ways to make a, uh, a return air plenum for your furnace. I, I can probably do 10 variations myself. Uh, and ain't saying that any of them are better than the others or any of them are more right than the other ones. It's just that the application or the circumstance sometimes dictates the application. And so this one here might not work in the situation I'm in tomorrow. Of course, I don't plan on being on one tomorrow because I'm retired and I'm only helping out a buddy anyway. So uh, at any rate, hey, hope you all enjoyed it. And this is Dragon Man 44, and I am out of here.